As of my recording this video on the 6th of August 2020, we did not yet have a date for when Game Maker Studio 2.3 would be out of beta. As luck would have it, that happened four days before this video was scheduled to be posted on the 18th of August 2020. Impeccable timing as always. Just ignore anywhere in this video where I might use future tense to describe the update instead of past tense. Okay, hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to 3D in Game Maker Studio 2. This has been a long time coming. So, most of you are probably aware that there's a major update to Game Maker Studio 2 coming on the horizon. Uh, it may or may not already be officially here, depending on when I decide to upload this video. 2.3, you've probably heard of it. It's adding a bunch of new language features to the GML programming language, that's redundant. It's adding a bunch of changes to the IDE. And in general, it's probably going to majorly transform the way that a lot of people use Game Maker, or at least have the ability to use Game Maker. And I've, um, I've been planning on updating this long-running 3D slash shader tutorial series to 2.3 when it's in a state that I consider to be um, mostly stable and usable and people are not likely to have unusual issues with it. And I don't know if it's going to be officially merged into the, uh, the stable branch of Game Maker Studio 2 by the time I post this video or if it's still going to be in beta, but either way, I consider it to be there now. Most of the issues have been ironed out by now, except for a couple unusual things. Uh, you're probably not going to have issues with the language not doing what it's supposed to do, or the IDE being bugged or something. So I'm going to update it. Um, going forward, all of these future tutorials are going to be done in 2.3. I do not want to get too far into how you install it and how you set it up or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to assume that you've already done that, that you've already watched someone else's tutorial on setting up 2.3. Uh, I am going to open a new IDE in 2.3, and that's going to take a moment. You know how I, I mentioned in the uh, the spotlight video, I think it was, that I thought I was recording and I wasn't, so I had to do the whole thing over again, because I did that again today. Fortunately, I didn't get as far into it as, um, as I did in the spotlight video, so it's not that much lost work, but it's still annoying to have to say the same words over again. All right, I wish I'd stopped doing that. I don't know how it happened. I think I might have actually literally missed the start recording button when I clicked on OBS. I've been known to do that before. Although usually I realize it when I miss the button. Has it? Has 2.3? There we go. Okay, so this is Game Maker Studio 2.3 if you've never seen it before. This, this beta channel message is probably not going to be there forever, so if you're watching this in the deep future, it will probably not be there. I am going to click open. I am going to find the last version of the project that I was working on which is a uh, 24 spotlights. It's going to tell me this project is of an older format and will need to be converted, to which I say that's fine. Uh, I'm going to be asked to save it as something else because it will automatically encourage you to make a backup in the form of, um, in the form of saving as something else. So I'm gonna call it 25, updating to 230. I call it 230 even though it's probably um, I think officially 2.3.1, mainly because I don't like having periods and file names that aren't part of an extension. Okay, so we've done this. Some things are already open because this is about the point where I realized I wasn't recording. Uh, first things, let me make the resource tree a little bit bigger. Um, the IDE has changed and you can now delete folders that don't contain anything. So I'm going to delete the folders for animation curves, extensions, fonts, and so on. If and when I need them, I can bring them back. Uh, now things are just less cluttered. I'm gonna run the game. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to look at any code that's not already open on the screen in front of you. And you can see that this works exactly as it did before. Um, everything is still rendering. Everything is still textured. Everything is still lit. It should be lit. Uh, the lighting is still working the same as before. As I say to everybody who asks, uh, mathematics is still mathematics. Shaders are still shaders. Uh, you don't have to throw away everything that you knew about game design before and start over. As you can see here, all of the code that we'd written that I will increase the font size on is still here. That's the draw event. This is the create event for the camera, creating the shapes that you're drawing later. Uh, if I go into the player, you can see there is some, um, uh, oh no, this is the ball. There is some collision detection going on. So what's changed? So. Aside from the um, aside from the obvious with the resource with the asset browser and the fact that you can just put any assets in any folder, 
Um, the main change that you're going to want to be aware of if you're not already is functions. So this is the load model function. Uh, this will load a D3D model file, a game maker model file, which is essentially just a list of vertices. And it didn't used to have this. It didn't used to have this load, load, this, sorry. It didn't used to have this function load model argument zero thing at the top. Um, if you're not aware of how functions work, I made a video on those a while ago when the 2.3 beta first came out and I'll link to that and I recommend you watch it. What we used to think of as scripts are now just functions. You can define a function anywhere in code, except in a shader. Although you can define functions for shaders, which is a, a different story for another day. You just have to put the code that you want to run inside that function, inside a, uh, a definition like this, function load model argument zero. Um, this has happened automatically when the, uh, the update was done, when it updated from 2.2 to 2.3, you can see. Uh, this is the screen to world function, it also has this. This comment at the top is not correct because that is what uh, the guy who initially wrote it called this function instead of screen to world. If I look at vertex add point, which is just an abstraction for adding stuff to a vertex buffer, same deal. If you were to look through all of the venomous bullet collision um, functions, you would see the same thing. By and large, this isn't something to worry about. I'm going to leave these alone. I'm going to leave all of these exactly as they were. It's worth mentioning, and I'm not going to do it for this one, but in the future, you may see me define a function something like this instead of argument zero. It's just going to have the, um, the argument name as a named parameter. Argument zero, argument one, etc., are now just variables, and it makes, well, mostly, and it makes no difference what you call them. You can call them you can call the argument variables whatever you want. I'm probably going to do that in the future, um, just not right now because I want to leave all of the things that I imported as is. Something that you may wish to do that I am not going to do is you are free to define as many functions in a single file of code as, as you want in a single script. So if you want to, you can define all of the venomous collision scripts. That's not what I wanted to copy. Let me try that again. You can define all of the venomous collision scripts in a single file or in a small number of single files, uh, perhaps one for each of these categories. If you don't like to have a million scripts floating around and you would rather just have all the collision scripts in the same place, that's fine. Uh, like I said, I am not going to do that. When it comes to objects, and these are the main other change, probably the most popular one, uh, structs are now a thing. If you don't know what a struct is, I made a video on those as well, several in fact. You can think of them as lightweight objects. You can think of them as objects that don't contain event. I am, believe it or not, not going to use those in this tutorial series for the foreseeable future. I'm going to keep using uh, game maker objects, which contain create events and draw events and stuff like that. I'm not going to use methods, mainly because I don't want to distract from, the, um, from what's actually going on, the important parts with vertex buffers and shaders and stuff by having things like methods get in the way that people may not be used to seeing. Also, I suppose another reason would be that if anybody is following this and is still using 2.2 and does not want to update, at least for the time being, one, I would suggest updating because you're probably going to want to be at least familiar with how 2.3 works. If someone is still using the old version, um, I, don't, I don't want this to be completely like unusable, so I'm not going to go overboard on the new features. In the deep future, I might start to do that, I might also just make a standalone video on what you would probably want your code to look like if you wanted to use structs. On Wednesdays, I am currently running a Let's Make a Tower Defense game series in which I am using structs instead of, um, instead of game maker objects for a 3D game. So if you want to see how that looks, um, I post those on Wednesdays. Let's see, what else? That should be all the changes that you need to be aware of. Other changes, data structures slash um, accessors. I can't currently imagine any reason why I would need to use those in the series since I'm not really making a game. I'm making a, um, a 3D rendering system here. Things like animation curves could possibly be useful. Animation curves are a new data type. Hey. I don't really think they're needed though. Um, sequences. People have been asking me to make a video on sequences, but like I have no idea how sequences work. I am a programmer. I am not a visual designer. I have gone out of my way and will continue to go out of my way to write code to do things that sequences do so that I don't have to deal with systems like sequences. I know Matharu has made several videos on sequences, so if you want to see how those work, you should probably go uh, check out his things. Anyway, what else is there? 
I'm pretty sure those are the main changes. Nothing to do with shaders has changed, which is the main thing that I'm concerned with. Nothing to do with vertex buffers has changed. The built-in system functions in general haven't changed. All right, I think that's it. Again, compatibility with 2.3 is currently pretty good. Uh, the issues that people usually run into generally happen when they try to start using the 2.3 language features in an old project and things go wrong. I definitely spent a few weeks sorting that out back in April and May. I don't really have anything else to add. Anything that I post after this is gonna be in 2.3, that's about it. Uh, as usual, code is going to be a, uh, a GitHub repository in the video description, although honestly, that's more of a formality than anything else for this video because I've changed nothing besides importing it. I have a Patreon as always, so if you want to chip in towards these videos being made, there's a link to that in the video description as well, and probably wherever else those things are supposed to go. The character cylinder sticking out of the, the um, the smooth shading sphere looks like some kind of weird eyeball thing, I just realized. I, I don't know what I think about that. God, that's weird, I'm gonna stop. Uh, yeah, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games. I generally post about two game dev tutorials a week, sometimes three, if one of them happens to be a short thing, which this probably is going to qualify as. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Hull, Indie Punch, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to pronounce them out loud at the end of every video, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.